gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 10th of January 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of WoW news and comment. In the headlines today, they've announced that World of Warcraft Cataclysm has now topped 4.7 million sales for the month, which sets a new record for monthly PC gaming sales. It was simultaneously released in many, many countries indeed on December the 7th and also became available in some of the Asian countries on December the 9th. It sold 3.3 million copies in a single day, which also makes it the fastest selling PC game of all time. The previous record was held by Wrath the Lich King, so there you go. A rather fantastic new piece of fan art has been added to the official Blizzard media section. If you're a big fan of both WoW and StarCraft 2, you could certainly do worse than to check out this, which you can see on the screen right now. There is a full-size version available, so that might be a nice piece of wallpaper for you. Highly recommend that you go and check it out. Also, there'll be scheduled realm maintenance on the US realms on Tuesday, January the 11th. It's going to start at 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and conclude at approximately 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's going to bring down most of the web services and, of course, all of the realms as well. Just bear this in mind, folks. This does happen on a very regular basis, but people keep forgetting for whatever reason. So there's a reminder. If you intended to either burn the midnight oil or get some early game play in, then you might be out of luck. And with that, it's time for your Daily Blues. Zahim responds in regards to some criticism regarding Tol Barad and indeed the wish of some players to get access to Baradin Hold regardless of who owns the actual battleground. And he says they have absolutely no plans to do that whatsoever, but they're looking into further fixes and balance adjustments for Tol Barad. And those are going to be happening in patch 4.0.6. They just haven't been listed in the patch notes yet. He also points out a terrible simile from Katsuma who says that people are running around like goldfish, replying that's a lie. I've never seen a goldfish run. Once again, Zahim responding to criticism of nerfing various heroic encounters and goes on to point out that anything like that is listed in the hotfixes and that many of these changes have actually been bug fixes. He does admit, however, that they did nerf heroic dead mines directly because they believe that the difficulty did need to be toned down. And he asks people to be a little bit more patient in terms of their perspective and look at it over the course of time as opposed to immediately reacting to individual changes. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm really torn on this, to be honest, because I don't believe that they needed to nerf heroic dead mines at all. I, I did heroic dead mines. I think actually what annoyed me the most is the fact that they nerfed that last encounter. You know, the crazy gimmicky one where you've got to go through those various traps and things like that. Why the hell did that need to get nerfed? That's insane. I don't know why they would even touch that. But yeah, I agree with fixing bugs. Obviously, who the hell disagrees with fixing bugs? But I would also agree with Zahim that people do tend to go a little bit crazy when it comes to the idea of buffs and nerfs and take them way out of proportion. Perspective, folks. Perspective. And now it's time for your daily grind. This one is available over at Fuse Light in the Badlands, and it involves doing things to goats. No, not like that. It starts with having to get an Ogre Magi staff in order to cheat at a goblin's invention, and then you get the opportunity to poke billy goats off the top of the cliff. Now, if you do 12 billy goats within one minute, you also gain this achievement right here. Ready, steady, goat. Truly shocking behavior. And with that, it's time for your weekly feature, and today it is, of course, Machetta Mondays. Having a look right here at something that a lot of people, including myself, would kind of regard as a gimmick. It's Zerg versus World of Warcraft, and it is quite simply the Zerg invading the land of Azeroth, and there's a battle and stuff goes on and stuff like that. Now, as a bit of fan service, I think it works extremely well, and that really is all that it is. It is blatant fan service, bunch of cool battle scenes, music from both of the games... Although, I've got to say, animation quality is all over the place. I mean, at the start, there's some really great stuff. Like, for instance, whoever the hell that guy is that stands at the front of Stormwind, can't even remember his name, Marshall or whatever, he goes and fights the Hydralisk, and you can see that they time it with the music, so it sounds really good, and the animation quality is fantastic there, blocking the spines going through. But then you look at some of the rest of it, and it's kind of garbage, especially when they bring in the StarCraft II units, whereby you can see a massive difference difference between animation quality there and no effort was made to try and 
synchronize that with the music or anything like that. So it does seem to be a video of two halves. There's blatantly a lot of potential there, and visually it's very impressive, and I do like the way that they've set it to music, but it does need quite a bit of work if they're going to develop anything more than a piece of fan service. So what I'll say for this one is I will give it a solid but needs improving three trolls out of five. You can click the link that's up on the screen right now to go and watch the full video. And with that, it's time for the mailbox. This one comes in from Amos who says, Hey TB, I've just been offered a place in one of the best raiding guilds in the realm, but I'm not sure whether to accept it. In my current guild, I'm currently the best geared and ranked 109th on the realm, but our guild hasn't started raiding yet. I don't know if I should stay with my current guild, which I have many friends in, or join this raiding guild. I don't want to let any of my current guildies down to join this raiding guild, but I feel they may be holding me back gear-wise. If I do end up leaving, how should I break the news to my guild? What should I do? God, I've got this reputation of as an agony ant now. Emphasis on the word agony, but whatever. <sighs> this is always going to be a personal choice because it comes down to what your goals are within the game. Are you there for social activity or are you there for progression? And uh, Don't get me wrong. Those things are not mutually exclusive. You're still going to have social activity within this raiding guild, but it might not be with the people that you want to play with. To me... Most of the time, if I wasn't in a raiding guild and I wasn't actually raiding, I wasn't even playing. Now, this has changed with Cataclysm because one, questing content's much better, and two, I actually don't have the time to do anything in the game anymore these days. But back in the day, it would always be for me, I would be trying to be in a raiding guild so that I can actually do progression content. Why? Because it was really the only thing I found enjoyable. So... I ask you this, are you enjoying yourself in your current guild? Are you having fun with your guildies? Because if so, then you might want to consider that that overrides the imperative to raid. However, if you're not having any fun and you feel stuck in the mud, you feel like you're not getting anywhere, and more to the point, you're not getting value for money out of your subscription fee because the people you're playing with are holding you back, then without question, you need to go and find a guild that will give you what you want. And it comes down, again, entirely to personal choice. There is no right or wrong answer. It just comes down to what you want out of the game at this present time. So follow that as to how to break the news while you just say, look, guys, you know, this is what I want out of my game on a personal level. I'm not getting that from this guild right now. And so I'm going to go find a guild that will offer me that. And if they find that offensive, well, that then becomes their personal problem. This one comes in from Austin, who says, Greetings, TB. I hope you're feeling better. Me and my friend are in an MMO debate at the current moment. He believes that Knights of the Old Republic Online, also known as the Old Republic, which is what they're calling it, will beat WoW once it comes out. His reason is better gameplay and a larger fan base. I disagree with this, however. I can't really see a Star Wars MMO putting up something that an MMO has done really. What? And something tells me that people won't shut down their WoW accounts just to go over to another game that is the same but with Jedi. So basically my question is, is it possible for this game to beat WoW just because of its fan base, or do you think that the gaming content from the game can best WoWs? Hmm. Well, the gaming content could absolutely best WoW. The problem is we don't know. The thing that I've got with the Old Republic is the fact that everything we've seen thus far has been absolutely tightly controlled snippets. Yeah? So they have put forward little bits of content. For instance, Cataclysm's beta went on for ages, and all of the beta content from the Old Republic is so highly NDA'd that you're not getting to see any of it at all. That concerns me, honestly. A, a massive NDA like that does seem to indicate that they are trying to hide problems with the game, and all of the releases are very tightly controlled in terms of PR. But again, we just don't know. Someone had a great quote, actually. I think it was over on the Bioware forums themselves, whereas they said, when you only know about 10% of what a game's actually going to be, your imagination fills in the other 90% and makes that game awesome. And that is actually the case. This has happened in many games. I said, oh, this is going to be great. This concept's amazing. Spore, prime example. You know, you barely really knew how the game was going to work. You'd seen a couple of press presentations. Your mind filled in the blanks. They, oh, this is going to be amazing, fantastic. And of course, it turns out it's not. So that is the problem with a game like The Old Republic. The fan base, though, the fan base argument's complete nonsense. Do you think that more people like the Warcraft universe than Lord of the Rings? I'm thinking no. Lord of the Rings has a much wider appeal. Star Wars has a much wider appeal. But Star Wars Galaxies wasn't a more popular MMO than 
I mean, hell, it wasn't even a more popular MMO than EverQuest at the time. Certainly never past World of Warcraft either. A bunch of other games did better than that. And Lord of the Rings Online, again, successful game, but nowhere near as successful as World of Warcraft, yet has a much more popular license. You have to understand that translating a fan base into a player base for a monthly subscription MMO is a difficult task and is not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. Tor could be amazing or it could be awful. We just do not know that. Will it kill WoW? Well, nothing's managed so far. And I've said this once, I'll say it a thousand times. Only thing that can kill WoW is WoW. People have far too much invested in this game to quit entirely. Yeah, they might unsub for a couple of months. I've done it a few times myself for different MMO games. I always find myself coming back to WoW though, because it's offering a high quality, consistent experience. But I've said it before, fact of the matter is that the people that will kill WoW are Blizzard. Now, only WoW will kill WoW. And that will be because that it gets to the point where it's exhausted the content that people are interested in it's not capable of offering anything else or it makes a bunch of bad decisions that lead to the player base actually quitting you will not get another game come along and steal all of wow's players it just can't be done wow is the apex of the hotkey based pve mmo experience i just don't think you can really improve on what wow offers at least outside of the realms of what blizzard can do themselves and now we've seen, oh, well, this game has better quest content. Well, not anymore, it doesn't. Therein lies the problem. You know, Blizzard is very good at borrowing ideas from other people and making them great and polishing them up. WoW is an incredibly derivative game. There's no question about that. But they're good at what they do, and you cannot question that. Okay, folks, I'm done for the day. Thanks a lot for watching Azeroth Daily, but it is my pleasure to announce the next postcards from Azeroth theme for this week. You've got until Friday to post a screenshot on the Facebook page. I would like to remind people that you cannot win if you use Photoshop. So if you alter the screenshot in any way beyond simply resizing it, then it will not be eligible for a prize. I might include it in the top ones, though, if it's really, really good and you've put a lot of effort into it. Whatever the case, I need you to find me the most screwed up and twisted thing in World of Warcraft. I need to go out there and see if you can find something that's genuinely creepy or disturbing or anything like that. Something that would freak people out. So go find that. Post your screenshots on the Facebook page. Click the F button at the top of the channel page or go to facebook.com slash cynicalbrit to post your entries. There's one other thing I'd like to mention just before closing and if you don't have a Twitter account you can safely turn off right now because it's not relevant to your interests. I am up for a shorty award at the moment in the category of gaming. I'm currently in the top six, which is where I need to be to get nominated for the finals. There are other great people up there as well, including the one and only Day9. Those guys are promoting their voting, so I guess I will too. You can head over in the description below this video to the Shorty Awards page. You have to have a current Twitter account. There was no point signing up to a new Twitter account to vote in this because it will simply be ignored. They have a system in place to do that. If you have a current Twitter account and you would like to vote for me in that category, that would be amazing. Bear in mind, votes are not mutually exclusive. You can vote for multiple people. So if you've already voted for Day9 or whatever, you can vote for me as well and it will not affect either of them. It would be great for both of us to be able to go to the finals for that one and see what actually happens and you can do that by clicking the link in the description below this video and you have to put a reason in the little tweet that you put out you have to put a reason otherwise it will be disqualified so thanks a lot for your support guys and i will see you next time